The game played on December 27, 1892, by Livingstone College in Salisbury, North Carolina, and Biddle University in Charlotte, North Carolina, now Johnson C. Smith University, was the first football game between black colleges in United States history. 23 years after Princeton and Rutgers had inaugurated college football. The Biddle Livingston players had no idea they were pioneering the sport for black colleges. Biddle took a controversial 4-0 decision and black college football was off and running. The Livingston College versus Johnson C. Smith game has recently celebrated its 125th anniversary. When football started at the teacher training school in 1914, African Americans were playing football for more than 40 years. The game had developed with the forward pass. This was the background during the creation of the Cheney team. They were not rookies in their first season. The 1914 article from the Philadelphia Tribune says they were a well-oiled machine even after losing their captain. There was a surge of players in the country after each war, Civil War, World War I, World War II, as the soldiers came home. This was the beginning of 98 years of Cheney football. With their first game under their belts, the specter of the beginning of World War I from 1914 until its end in 1918 would affect the growth of the program and limit the team to only seven games from 1914 until 1921. The results were three wins and four losses. There are three additional newspaper articles besides the first game that the Philadelphia Tribune covered between 1914 in 1921. These are among the earliest Cheney players. The Philadelphia Tribune gave us the starting roster, thankfully, for each team. This is the roster from the very first Cheney game. Boyer at left end, Hilton at left tackle, Mitchell left guard, C. Dunlap the center, Gibson right guard, Wicks right tackle, Rice right end, Duplessis quarterback, Gilbert left half, Hawks right half, Johnson fullback. In addition, there's a roster for the Downingtown game and one for the Wissahickon game in their prospective years. We can see several players in both games. The 1923 season schedule was five games, the most up to that date, and it was just beginning of a full season of games. Added to the local schedule was Boys State, Princess Anne, which was Mer now Merlin Eastern Shore, and Morgan State, which now required travel. From 1923 to 1928, they had 19 wins, 14 losses, and 7 ties. The 1925 team posted a 6 and 1 loss record. And that was followed by a three win, one loss, one tie mark in 1926. The coach of the 1928 Cheney team was Leander Grayson Logan, an industrial arts professor since 1913. He was a pillar of the school and coach of all athletic teams in that era. In addition, we want to shine a spotlight on four players listed on those early rosters who were inducted into the Cheney Hall of Fame 
and they are Clifford C. Washington, class of 1921, James Suggs, also the class of 1921, Theodore Brown, class of 1923, and Warden H. Burton, class of 1927. A coaching change was made in 1929. Up to that point, Cheney's overall record since 1914 was 22 wins, 16 losses, and 7 ties. The new coach was Professor J.C. Williamson. He started off with four winning seasons, 6-2 in 29, 7-2 in 30, 8-1 in 31, and 4-1 in 1932. Going 25-6-2, he surpassed the 22 wins in 15 years quickly. Cheney became a member of the New Middle Atlantic Athletic Association, founded in 1931. The members were all African American schools as segregation was prevalent. The schools were Bowie Normal School, now Bowie State University, Bordentown Manual Training School, Downingtown Industrial, Princess Anne Academy, now University of Maryland Eastern Shore, Delaware State, and a team from West Virginia, Stora College. Coach Williamson's first season showed that he also taught a powerful defense as he outscored the opposition 138 to 84. These articles are from the Philadelphia Tribune. The 1930 season was an even bigger success. They went 7 and 2. These are articles from the 1930 Philadelphia Tribune. A preseason article from the September 1933 Philadelphia Tribune lament the problems the Cheney coach was going to have this season after winning the Middle Atlantic title in 1931 with an 8-1 record. And in 1932, Cheney had won back-to-back -back championships in 1931 and 1932. Winning the title in the first and second years of the Middle Atlantic Athletic Association's existence. A bit of history we found it. In 1931, Cheney had his best season ever, eight wins, one loss, winning the new Atlantic Athletic Association's championship. The 1931 team set an offensive point scored record of 237 points in one season. That was never surpassed and set the defensive record of allowing the least points. They gave up only 27 points in a nine-game schedule. That was never surpassed. Cheney's defense shut out every team that zero points eight game, but Morgan State won 27-0. Cheney followed that up the next year, 1932, with another championship, going 4-1-2, and two, winning the championships despite the tie. Now back to the 1933 article on Lament. It produced the first losing season for Coach Williamson. The team went 2-5-1. Suffering two more losing seasons, 1934 they went 3-5, in 1935, they went 3-4-1, and one, but bounced back to win the Middle Atlantic Athletic Association's 1936 championship. We would like to acknowledge the players of that era and give special mention to those who were selected into the Cheney Hall of Fame as representatives of all the players. Raleigh Ellis, class of 1930. Joseph Deary class of 1930, John W. Bevins, class of 1930, George Edsel, class of 1930, Perry Stewart, class of 1932, Rufus Johnson, class of 1933, 
James H. Moore, class of 1934, Richard Fleming, class of 1935, and Wade Wilson, class of 1936, who went on to become the president of the college. The 1936 season started out slow. The first game ended in a 0-0 tie with Bordentown. The second game was a 7-0 loss to Lincoln University, which was telling. To hold Lincoln to just seven points was an accomplishment itself. Cheney beat Delaware State 29-0 in game three. In game four, the Wolves beat DC Teachers 13-0 and exploded the next two games beating Boys State 60 to nothing and West Virginia Store 50 to nothing. Delaware State, the 1935 champion, lost a crucial game that secured Cheney the championship. After the championship season of 1936, the 1937 season yielded two wins, three losses, and two ties. In their first game, they tied Bordentown 0-0. The Lincoln Lions beat Cheney 12-0 in their second game. Cheney beat Delaware State in this third game and next lost to D.C. Teachers 6-0 in their fourth game. Lost to Howard 31-12 and came back and walloped Bowie State 47-0 and then tied with Stora College of West Virginia 0-0 and this completed their 1937 season. The 1938 season Cheney fared a little better with three wins, two losses, and one tie. Tied Bordentown Manual 6-6 after tying them the year before 0-0. Lost to Lincoln U by a whopping 64-0 score their second game. Beat Delaware State 20-0 the next weekend. Lost to D.C. Teachers 6-0. Lost to Howard 14 to 0, then smashed Merlin Eastern Shore 43 to 0, and Wallop Story College of West Virginia 34 to 7. In the 1939 season, Cheney's record was three wins and four losses. The first game was lost to Bordentown Manual 13 to 6. Lincoln University won the second game 13 0. After two losses, Cheney bounced back to beat Delaware State 12-7. But in the fourth game, Cheney lost to D.C. Teachers 6-0, then lost to Howard 19-6. At this point in the season, their record was one win, four losses. But in the last two games, they beat Maryland Eastern Shore 25-0 and West Virginia Store College 52-0, ending their season with a two-game winning streak. In the 1940 season, Cheney's record was two wins, four losses, and one tie. Bordentown Manual swamped Cheney 43-7, getting some payback for previous years. Lincoln University won the second game 13-0, the same score as last year. The Wolves beat Delaware State 7-0 for his first win. Then tied D.C. Teachers 7-7 in Game 4. Lost to Howard 2-0 on a bad center snap that determined the outcome. Then beat Merlin Eastern Shore 15-7. Lost to West Virginia Store 2-0. Cheney's record since the 1936 championship has been 10 wins, 14 losses, and 3 ties. Coach Williamson's record since 1929 is 52 wins, 37 losses, and 9 ties. The 1941 season 
will produce a winning record. World War II will make Cheney's 1941 season their last until after the war. The next season will be the 1946 season. Ending with a winning record of 5-2 in 1941, which they lost to the two CIAA teams, Lincoln and Howard, they swept the teams that were in the Middle Atlantic Athletic Association. Cheney beat Bordentown in game one. Lincoln wins the second game, 46 to nothing. Cheney upsets Delaware State in game three, 27-12. And then a large homecoming crowd watched Cheney beat D.C. teachers, 1913. Howard wins game five, 33-6. Cheney defeats Maryland Eastern Shore, 33-6. And West Virginia Storer, 39-0 to finish the season. A newspaper article from the November 1937 Philadelphia Tribune states that Cheney had been applying to become a part of the State Teachers College Football League. It is so important that we will read the entire letter. It is also important to know that there was some resistance from the article. Authoritative sources say that Cheney State Teachers College at Cheney, PA, will be a member of the State Teachers College Football League next year. Though officials of the school were not prepared to issue any statement in connection with this story, there is considerable feeling that it is true. If this is so, then Cheney Wolves will have plenty on their hands from now on as far as football is concerned. The State Teachers College League is composed of 14 schools, seven in the west, seven in the east. These form two sub-leagues, and on Thanksgiving Day of each year, the winning team in each division meets to determine the championship of the league. The Cheney team, which is coached by Professor J.C. Ramson, will have the opportunity to play against some of the best teams in their class in the east when they meet in league competition. Westchester State is a notable example, the school being one of the powerful ones in this vicinity. Cheney's new $20,000 athletic field is expected to be completed by next year and in readiness for the new athletic program. What other arrangements will be made to care for the increased burden of the athletic department still depends on a successful negotiation on the signing up papers. Cheney has for seven years been a member of the Middle Atlantic Athletic Association, but it has already outgrown the league, which numbers among its members, Downing Town, Boarding Town, Miners, Store, Princess Anne. With an older student body and aided by the state funds which have been so liberally granted, Cheney has steadily been advancing out of the ranks of prep school grades and more or less assumed its true status as a college. $20,000 in 1937 is worth $348,759.49 in 2018. Biggest handicap to the school under the new plan will be a male student body large enough to provide enough men to form suitable opposition for the teams in the league. From 1914 to 1941, the Cheney football record was 74 wins, 53 losses, and 16 ties. A good record. Coach Williamson's record at the World War II break is 52 wins, 37 losses, 9 ties, over 14 years. After a four-year break, he would continue in 1946 with a winning season and coach on for more years. Cheney would play his first PSAC game against Clarion in 1948, but Cheney would not have a winning record under any coach for 20 years after Williamson's 1946 season until 1966.
joining the PSAC would be devastating on a football program. We would like to announce that the Whistletops Foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit charitable institution and donations are tax deductible to the fullest extent allowed by law.